Christy Day with Stitch and Have It, and welcome to another week of Schoolhouse Dash. We are so excited that you are participating with us. This week, we are going to actually do one of the first blocks I ever did when I started quilting. We're going to do the log cabin. The log cabin's fun because you have a center square and then you just work your way around it. So it's really fun. Very versatile. Once you get the concept, you can put it into a million different blocks, a million different, I mean, a million different quilts, a million different layouts to make blocks that look curvy. I mean, there's just so much you can do with it. So we're excited to bring you this today. A few things about Schoolhouse, a few housekeeping things about Schoolhouse Dash. Um, don't forget to post your blocks. We love seeing your blocks. There's an album on Facebook that Anita has set up for every week. So make sure you post it there. And if you'll hashtag it Schoolhouse Dash, it will actually alert us to go and look at them. Um, also, the little bell at the bottom of this video, you'll see a little bell. If you'll just click on it, you will be alerted when we post a video. Okay, so the log cabin is going to, you're going to make four of them this week. Mitzi Red is going to walk you through it, but there are four of them, and there are four different places on the quilt. They're kind of the corner squares here. One, two, three, and four. Um, so they kind of help frame it or give it a little bit of structure. Um, when I was thinking about this this morning, I was thinking about the log cabin and how much we love the log cabin. If you, if you love it, we actually have some extra products that you might enjoy. We have these things, they're called Grab and Go Ready to Sew, and they are pre-cut kits. So every piece is pre-cut for you. All you have to do is open the package, lay them out, and start stitching. So you don't even have to do any cutting, which is nice, but we have two log cabins. We have a, a traditional log cabin, and then we have the modern log cabin as well. The modern log cabin just has the center is a little bit larger. Goes just a smidge faster. But these are some of the projects we have. This one is a table runner or you can use it as a bed runner. But everything comes in the pack that you need. This one, everything, even the backing comes with it. Okay, so we have tons of these varieties. We're producing these every single month. We're doing about 10 of them a month. And then we have the wall hanging. Or you could actually use it as a baby quilt, which is great. So if you have a shower coming up or something quick that you need a gift for, this is that modern log cabin. It goes together super, super quick. This one does not come with a backing because these are actually modular. So you can buy four of them and make a big quilt. But just super, super cute. All right, without further ado, Miss Mitzi Red in the log cabin. Enjoy. All right, what is more traditional in quilting than the log cabin block? If you haven't made a log cabin block, they can look a little intimidating because you're trying to figure out what piece goes where and how they stack together. But don't worry, we're going to walk you through it and I'll get you right there to it. So in the quilt here with Schoolhouse Dash, you are getting hold of these, oh, let me go down here to it, these beautiful, my favorite in these island boutiques, all these gorgeous blue colors from the light icicle all the way back to my favorite ocean. So you're gonna see all of these colors coming in together. We're gonna to start building out that log cabin. Now, I've probably mentioned before how important cutting is. And there's this, this goes so true here because you're working with so many different colors you've got to make sure your cutting is consistent. So do take your time when you get to the cutting part. Now, myself, I cut everything out ahead of time for these blocks. So I want to make sure I've got everything stacked together. So even back here on my table behind for the next, you can see to where they're all laid out together. So just to give you an idea what you're looking at, you've got the white, okay? We have rain, icicle, bluebird. I'm gonna make sure we are at scuba yep ocean and then your pool okay so all the colors are there these are my my next set of fabrics to go to make the rest of the blocks you got a total of four of these blocks they're going to make up the corners of the quilt behind me so and we'll look at more of those later once it all comes together 
So I like to, again, lay everything out, and this advantage of my Martelli mat is because I can lay everything out to where I need it to be. So try to tip this without them falling off. Um, I've got everything laid out. Now, when you look at it like this, you may be thinking, how in the world is it all gonna go together to make that block to, to tuck in so nicely? But it does. It, once you've worked together, because you gotta keep in mind, you're taking down quarter inch seams, and so it all comes nicely in together, okay? So, we start in the middle, is where we begin with. Take my white. I'm gonna take my smaller piece of my rain, Okay, now it's gonna be important, you're gonna press a lot, so keep your iron close, and you're gonna be realigning a lot and making sure everything is in place the way it can be, or it should be, because it can be easily to get off on the wrong direction with it. So just take your time. I am, of course, using a quarter inch seam allowance on this. Got my machine all set up. And I am still sticking with the same light colored Aurifil thread for my Island Batiks because it does blend in really nicely. So, first one I'm starting with is my smaller piece of my rain. And I'm, for this one, I'm always pressing outward. So what's that mean? What you're gonna see as we go along here, I'm gonna use my Larsar iron here, I'm gonna give it a good press from that way, and then I'm gonna press it out. Okay, now the reason I like having it laid out when I showed you on my board here is because then I can just take my next piece and I know exactly where it should fit. So it's gonna come in right on top of that one. And that way, since I've already got everything laid out ahead of time, if I have a moment going, wait, which direction is that supposed to go? I can literally just sit it right back in there and it really is gonna help keep you lined up. So let me go ahead and stitch that one in. Take your time on these. Y'all know I'm a speed quilter, but on log cabins, I do actually take my time, okay? All right, rain is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that out. Okay, and so this is where I was mentioning, you know, I can always take a look back and go, ooh, am I going the right direction or, or I forget who goes next. Now the directions are great about telling you, but having the board in front of me or wherever it's laid out gives me the opportunity where I can take my piece now and I can just drop it right back in and go, oh yeah, next up is the icicle. It's gonna be right there on the bottom because it can get easy to be twisted around on a log cabin. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the smaller piece of the icicle. I love these colors. Icicle is one of my favorites. Icicle and ocean, of all the colors in here, icicle and ocean, that dark navy are, are my absolute favorites in the group. So this is where I said it's gonna be really good to keep your iron close by because you do need to go ahead and press these um, after each one. Okay, because you want to make sure your seams are nice and flat. It's not something you can really wait on until afterwards. You need to make sure they're good and flat as you're putting these in. Okay, next up, my larger. So you always have a smaller and a long, or, and this is in length, a short, or I should say shorter and longer um, in each of the colors that you've cut. Because what they do is they start working their way around um, the, the white square in the center. Okay, so we're just gonna go into that little press too. All right, now I've got a nice square. We're coming in, see it's getting together. So I'm gonna lay it in here and figure out who goes next. And you can see um, with it once I lay it out and when you have yours laid out, Bluebird's gonna go on next. So let me just line that up. You'll see I'm not using any pins, and that's okay. Again, if you feel like you're more comfortable using pins, please do. Don't hesitate to use pins. Okay, I'm just giving those a good press in there. Come my next length, the bluebird. Okay. 
Okay. And as you can see, as we start to work through this, you're just building out these colors. So you're continuing to build out all the way. And you'll see where they start to really make a nice tightening up. You're going to get really great points coming in as long as you're staying consistent on that quarter inch seam. Okay. So Bluebird is on. I'm just putting that in. Now I'm not using steam just yet. I will later once I get to it. So see, I can, again, I'm always come right back onto my board and go, okay, who's next? So we know on this one, we're going with scuba. Again, take a look at your batik. Some side, you might like one side better than the other and that's perfectly fine. Use that as what's considered your right side of the fabric. There is nothing wrong with that. Scuba's going on now. It's a lot of stitch and press and stitch and press. Okay, there's, we'll call it short scuba. Now we're gonna go to long scuba. Again, just pick your favorite side. That's the great thing about batiks is they are gorgeous either side, but you can pick which one you like the best. Okay, so long scuba is going on. Okay. And we're down to the last two colors now. Only four more pieces to go. And you've got a log cabin. It's going together a lot quicker than you thought it might go, right? Let's just go ahead and press that in. Okay. And again, I can always come right back and go, okay, who's next? Well, this one's going to be my favorite oceans. So on this one, as you can see with the log cabin, you've got your darks going one direction and your lights, lighters going out the other. So ocean is next. Slide that over a little bit. And it just really keeps building out these gorgeous colors. Beautiful design for the schoolhouse dash. And putting those log cabins in the corners makes a really nice setting. Okay, I've got one more of the ocean to put on. And by pressing in between every strip, one, it just gives you a nice flat surface to work with, but two, it just helps to get that all crisp and together. So you don't have to try to come back later and fight in any of your seams or anything of that sort. Okay, make sure we're staying hot. Now it's gonna probably wake up and yell at me like my Laura Star does, but that's okay. Love having that iron in here to, to work with. Ocean's going next. And this is the longer ocean. So once this one goes on, I've only got two more pieces to go. One more short, one more long. So super easy, super fast. Just go ahead and press to set that seam, set those threads. All right, and how about that last color? So this will be our pool. It's the last one out for the lighter of the blues. Just gonna put that one in real quick. Did you know a log cabin could be this easy? It really can. As long as you pay attention when it comes to your cutting and making sure those seams are a nice quarter inch all the way through, you're gonna end up with a beautiful block. Last piece goes down. Just gonna line that up corner to corner, right on and send it through. Come 
Almost all the way there. So if you don't have a quarter inch foot for your machine, you know, every machine has one available for, there's, you know, even for really a lot of our vintage machines, there's aftermarket quarter inch feet if you don't have one for it. So find one that fits your machine. If not, there are great tools out there that you can use to mark your bed to make sure you're staying consistent on that quarter inch seam. But find, find whatever tool is needed for you, for your machine, because it, it's very important. Because when you do it right, you've got a great log cabin ready to go. So remember how was all those pieces there light, light up and it looked like there was no way they're gonna go together? They do. So you have four of these to make. They're gonna be your corner in the corner here coming in of on that churn dash uh, colored center. So just get to it. You've got four to go. They go by super fast and you'll be done before you know it and ready for the next block.